There are four major systems of the Earth, and they are known as the atmosphere, hydrosphere, biosphere, and the geosphere. The mixture of gases surrounding and protecting the Earth is the atmosphere. There is about 78% of nitrogen and 21% of oxygen. The hydrosphere is all the water on the Earth, like oceans, lakes, glaciers, and rivers, with many more. It covers about three-fourths of the Earth. The biosphere has all the life on Earth. Satellites can track how the plants and animal life changes. All the features on the Earth are known as a geosphere. This includes continents, islands, and the layers of the Earth, which are the crust, mantle, outer core, and inner core. There are also maps to view the Earth in different ways. One way is a relief map that shows how high or low a feature is on Earth. Projections of map also show people how the Earth looks when one side is being shown. Cylindrical projections, also known as Mercator projections, show the Earth as if a cylinder was wrapped around the planet. Conic projections also show a cone that has been rolled out. The planet projections were made to show the shortest way between two points. They show the polar regions very well. People use remote sensing to get info on a place that is far away. A sensor is an electronical or mechanical device that receives and responds to a signal. False color images replace real images with artificial ones to show special features. An example on how this is useful is that a fire can be seen with a false color image and mark it spreading. GIS stands for Geographic Information Systems. It stores different types of maps to help make decisions. It makes terrain, roadway, and population maps. There are many maps, but today I'm going to be talking about one specific map, and that's topographic map. Topographic maps are able to show the slope, elevation, and relief of the line. The slope is represented by a space between each contour line. This further explains the steepness of the land, like if it was a sudden clip or drop off. The elevation of an area is how high it is above sea level. It can also be further explained by the contour intervals and by an index contour line. A contour interval is the distance represented between two contour lines. An index contour line is one specific line that shows the elevation at one specific point in the line. Also, on a topographic map, the relief of a landform is the landform's highest and lowest points. When one may draw a topographic map, there are two main rules. A contour line cannot end, and contour lines cannot cross. A true mineral meets these requirements. One. Forms in nature. Two. Is the solid. Three. Has a definite chemical makeup. Four. It has a crystal structure. For rule one. Minerals can form in many ways. Halite is used for table salt. It forms as water evaporates from a hot, shallow part of the ocean. There are only a few exceptions for rule one. An example is that oysters can form pearls. For rule two. It means to have a definite volume and rigid shape. Liquids and gases aren't a mineral. But the solid form might be. Like ice is a mineral and water isn't. For rule 3, it has to consist of specific combinations of atoms of certain elements. Scientists can also use minerals to help identify other minerals. For example, you have three minerals with you. The first is talc. And the other is calcite. And you know that talc is, has a hardness of 1. And calcite has a hardness of 3. Then you would see if the mystery mineral could be scratched by either talc or calcite. If it couldn't be scratched by talc. And it was scratched by t calcite. You would know that the mystery mineral would be... Gypsum! Ancient Egyptians used minerals in the past for gems and necklaces and other jewelry over 4,000 years ago. Nowadays, minerals are being used for... Technology. Industry and the... Arts. Mining is two different types, deep and surface mining. Surface mining is process mining at the surface. There are three kinds of surface mining, panning, strip, and open pit. Panning is used to find gold in streams or shallow bodies of water. In the pan, water is washed off and gold seems to bond because gold is essential in water. Strip mining is used when strips of, strips of land are removed in desperation of finding ore. And open pit mining is the process of digging a giant hole in the ground with the possibility of finding some valuable for profit. Deep mining is used when the ore is detected far beneath the earth's surface. In order to get, to get those ores, miners use methods such as drilling, blasting, cutting, and digging. Drilling is when people drill holes in the ground by using machines. Last thing is when miners use explosives to get into the ground. Cutting is practiced by cutting down into our surface, and digging is when people simply dig into the ground. Some negative impacts of mining are related to the environment. Mining can have an effect on the environment and nature by removing some possible habitats for animals. And also, it can affect plant life by mining right next to like tree roots and affecting the like nutrients of the ground.
And it can also affect like the roots of berry bushes. And... The rock cycle helps Earth get its different types of rocks. There are three types of rocks in general. There are igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic rocks. Igneous rocks are formed as magma cools down. Sedimentary rocks form when rocks break down into sediments from weathering and erosion takes it somewhere else. And the layers of sediments build on top of each other and compress to form a rock. Metamorphic rocks form as heat and pressure are applied to a rock. These rocks can all become event each other eventually. Igneous can be weathered and eroded to form sedimentary or go under heat and pressure to form metamorphic. Sedimentary rocks can melt into magma that can cool down to make igneous. Sedimentary rocks can also become metamorphic when heat and pressure is applied. Metamorphic rocks can become igneous by melting into the lava and having it cool down. And it can become sedimentary by weathering and erosion. There, are also, there, can, be, there can be intrusive igneous, which magma cools under the surface of the earth and has lots of crystals. An example is granite, and it can be used to make countertops. There is also extrusive igneous, which magma cools above the surface and has very little or no crystals. An example is basalt which can be used for asphalt pavement and road bases. An example of a sedimentary rock is limestone, which can be used as an ingredient for toothpaste, glass making, and making brake pads. An example of metamorphic rock is shale, and can be used for cement, bricks, and concrete. Weathering is the process by which natural forces break down rocks. The three main tests of weathering are chemical, biological, and mechanical. Now let's get serious. Chemical weathering is the breakdown of rocks by chemical reactions. Some examples of special types of weathering are rust and acid rain. Acid rain occurs when pollution gets into water particles and over time can weather away monuments and other objects. Mechanical weathering is the breakdown of rocks by physical forces. Examples of mechanical weathering are abrasion and ice wedging. Abrasion is the weathering by friction, usually in running water, and jagged surface rocks that are warm. Biological weathering is when any living thing changes rocks. Some examples of biological weathering are tree roots, people walking, and animal breaking down rocks. Tree roots may get through cracks in a rock, and when cracks expand, they can break rocks. Soil is very important to us in our daily lives because it's food that we eat. Because food grows in the soil and takes nutrients from it to help it grow. How soil forms is not complicated. Soil is a mixture of weathered rock particles and some other material that is made of 5% organic matter, 20-30% water, and the same for air, and 45% weathered particles. There are many types of soil including clay, sandy, loam, silk loam, clay loam, peat, and muck. How soil is determined is based on the kind of rock in the area, the climate, the plants cover the area, and animals nearby, and time. Or the erosion soil can be can become very unfertile with the wind blowing away sand particles and water taking away the nutrients. And that is why many people, such as farmers, have developed a method to conserve soil. Some of the ways are terracing windbreaks and crop rotation. Terracing is made of steps, steps in the ground to allow water to not flow downhill. The water then will not take away any of the nutrients away from the soil. Windbreaks in trees or shrubs are planted in the field to block the wind from taking away the soil. There are also crop rotation, which basically a crop that gets a lot of nutrients, and then planting a crop that gives off a lot of nutrients. Erosion is the process of taking weathered particles from one place to another. There are five major ways that erosion can take place. Streams, wind, gravity, waves, and ice. Streams can carry sediments down its path and deposit them at the end. They could end up in an ocean, a lake, or a delta. Wind can blow particles and take them to a new location. This is how dunes are made and destroyed. Winds would take the sand particles and deposit them at a new location, and then they would collect up and make a little hill. Then later, wind can blow the sand away from this dune and form a new dune somewhere else. Gravity is the most major form of erosion. It pulls weathered particles down a hill into a new location. It can pull some of the largest objects down, like boulders. Waves are another way erosion can take place. There is a thing called a long, short drift. It's basically a zigzag movement of the sand on the beach. 
Waves hit the beach at an angle and retreat back straight. This is known as the longshore current. This causes the sand to constantly be moved from one place to another. Ice is our last method of erosion. Glaciers are large masses of ice that move over land. At the bottom of a glacier, it is slightly liquid, so it's able to pick up any sediment that are loose and carry them until they get dropped off. The term for sediments being dropped off is known as deposition.